final um, notes activity in this series is called checks and balances. So today we're going to learn about how all the branches, all three branches of government check and balance each other so that not one branch of government has too much power or goes rogue. So um, this is going to be our final final video in this series for check for um, parts of the government. So checks and balances is the system that allows each branch of government to limit the powers of the other branches. You're going to fill in the arrows below as I go over them with you. So as you can see, we have the legislative branch on the bottom, the left, the judicial branch on the bottom right, and the executive branch on the top. So the hour, hour, arrows pointing show how, for example, the top arrow here shows how the legislative branch checks the executive branch. And the way that the legislative branch can check legislative branch is if it overrides, it can override a veto. So I think, I, I don't think I can turn this around, but it overrides a veto. Whoops. Can override a veto. So the veto, if the president vetoes a bill, the, the House, the Congress can override the veto if they have enough votes. And how the executive branch checks on checks and balances the Congress, the legislative branch, they can veto the law. So if there is a law, they can veto a law that Congress passes. So that's how the House and the executive branch check and balance each other. Now let's look at the judicial branch and the executive branch. How does the executive branch check the judicial branch? Well, very simply, the executive branch can nominate Supreme Court justices. So the president puts in place in the Supreme Court people who he thinks will vote the way he believes. And that's how the executive branch checks the judicial branch. So how does the judicial branch check the executive branch? Well, the judicial branch can, in effect, de can declare treaties unconstitutional. Oops. So a president can make a treaty constitutional and the executive branch can then go ahead and declare it unconstitutional. Now let's look at how the legislative branch and judicial branch check and balance each other. So the legislative branch checks the judicial branch because it approves Supreme Court justices. So when the president nominates or appoints a Supreme Court justice, the legislative branch has to actually vote and approve it. It's very rare that they don't approve a justice, but that's what the job of the legislative branch is. And how does the judicial branch check the legislative branch? Well, they can decide because they know um, they can decide whether a law is unconstitutional or not. So they can, they, they declare laws are unconstitutional. So they can say, here, I'll move that so you can see it. They declare laws that are unconstitutional. So legislative branch can make a law, but then the judicial branch can ultimately declare it unconstitutional and the law goes away. So what are some of the benefits and drawbacks of having the system of checks and balances? So the first benefit, so the first benefit is it prevents a branch from becoming, whoops, too powerful. 
So no one branch can become more powerful than the others. And the second way, doesn't want to cooperate. The second way, oh, all right, last time, is that two branches of government work together to make important decisions. So not one, not simply one branch is going to make any important decision by itself. They kind of check and balance each other. And then the drawbacks for this system is pretty clear. It becomes very time consuming and slows down the speed of decisions. So it does make things work a little bit more slowly. So that is basically the way the house, the checks and balances and how each branch of government checks and balances each other. So remember, you can stop, pause, rewind, and rewatch the video in order to make sure you have all the notes. And don't forget to submit your notes through Canvas for credit. And that's it for today. Thanks, guys.